should actually be alive now. You just miss a good practice and qualifying session. As I started the stream, the computer decided it needed a graphics card update so it wouldn't actually start the stream. We only had two seconds difference between the field in the qualifying session, so it was very tight qualifying indeed. So our cars are mostly McLarens throughout the field. Our top few cars were the Ferraris. So, so far we've got Gallon 350 in the lead, so we just caught in time to get this driver update done ready for the race. I was wondering why our chat channel was rather quiet. And it's definitely quiet when there's nothing being shown at all. So, I have done some of my best commentating perhaps and we've missed it all unfortunately. Double checking to make sure we aren't getting any tech issues of any dropouts on my other console for the broadcast. However, I didn't get any notice that the stream hadn't actually started at all. But here we are into race one of the opening round of the Hamper HQ GT3 World Tour. Oh, we've had Simo already head into the pit, so he's taken some damage already, only in lap 3. We saw some very tight times. We had most of the field come through in the 1 minute 7 mark. And then in the last couple of laps, it was Gallon and Rooney coming through in just breaking into the slow 106. And with half the field... Only doing two seconds. Oh, there's a little bit of lag going on, I think, with Rooney's car. It looked like he'd heavily hit that wall. Try to see if there's any damage showing to that car. And Rooney did some great driving in the practice session. He actually managed to pull off quite a long drift around the bend in this McLaren. Well, it's a shame we didn't get to see that one. I'll probably have to save my some screen capture on my console so I can add that to the group. And we have a lot of debut drivers in this series. I did go through and welcome them all earlier on but unfortunately I was doing that to an audience of myself. So I do apologise for missing out on that. But all these drivers are actually competing for quite a good prize. As soon as I get out a coffee mug for some, however, Hamper HQ is being kindly enough to sponsor this series and are providing a lovely hamper of alcohol and nibblies and the likes to the value of $165. So these drivers are very keen to see themselves get their hands onto that hamper. It'll be a very wonderful timing thing around Christmas time. This will wrap up in the week of just before Christmas. So Bertie and Terex and Sami also coming in now as well. So Bertie's in the Bentley Continental. Sami and Terex are in the McLaren 650S. And Sami catch up. Very nice line by both of them are going. Ooh, they're narrowly avoiding so I'm not sure who that is. That is, I think it's Weaven's car. Yes, it's Weaven's car. He'd gone off. That was. It looks like he's taken damage. There could have potentially been some hits where he was sitting around that on a very fast corner, very blind. Rooney's now contesting for second position. Oh, Zero is this past him, a nice inside pass. I think 
that is on turn one. Let's have a look. Oh, Mersey Blue has disconnected. Thanks for joining us, D-Train. Fortunately, we didn't get to cover the practice of qualifying session. is now moving to second position. Gallon 350 doing well with almost seven seconds ahead now. Six laps in, we're almost halfway through the sprint race. If he can keep this pace, this race should be his. When Gallon did win the championship, he did win it in the Ferrari. That was in the Ferrari 488 Challenge. So that car is familiar to him at this stage. So probably a good choice, so he's probably going to be quite formidable for this series in the Ferrari. There will be a few disadvantages to some of the cars. I've tried to do a good track selection, a look through a good bit of variety so that there's not too much of an advantage. Yeah, our opening series for Apex Esports League was the GT3 World Tour Season 1. We did the most iconic tracks around the globe. So I tried to do a little bit more of variety and did some shorter versions of tracks so that there isn't too much of an advantage. Once it comes to Mount Panorama, that Ferrari does not have the top end speed compared to the rest of the cars. So they were getting rounded up pretty quickly on Mountain Straight and on Conrod. However, they were incredibly nimble through the mountain. Bertie in that big beast of a Bentley Continental. That's some good top end speed. And we did jump on board with Bertie earlier. It would have been nice to have actually seen just how much he was actually fighting that car through most of the corners. And he does do that from a controller as well. So a little bit of spacing. So Simo Simsel and John 07 is taking a time infringement penalty and also moved towards the back of the field. Looks like they've had a bit of an accident between. I don't think they were together. Then we do have some debut races with us. So Sami debuting with us tonight. We welcome him to Apex Esports League. He did start with a one grid place penalty. And other new drivers is Santi. So welcome to the league. As a normal, also new tonight. And Strasbourg. Oh, looks like he is spun out. So we saw, did see a fair few cars spin out on that corner. That's where Weaven was just off earlier as well. That's where we saw, um, I saw anyway, referring to we when we missed the first two sessions. That's where Rooney went for a big drift around that corner. It was quite spectacular. That we saw a lot of cars actually in it around that corner. I thought the chicane would have been most likely placed to see some incidents but it's been quite tight through that chicane and look at these times on the midfield at the moment fourth through to seventh position oh, it sounds like it's heard a wall scrape I'm not sure on there but this is very tight between them there's only two seconds separating well actually from third through to seventh Rooney is honing down on that Bentley big time. And I think it is all McLarens throughout the S4X. And Demon effects in the Ferrari, so coming up the back of them in that Ferrari. We're joking in the lobby that it's almost just a McLaren one-make series, as it seems to be the car of choice. 
What was interesting is our opening series being the GT3 World Tour for Apex Esports League back in April, the popular car was the Ferrari 488. But I did think a Cadillac actually won the series. Oh, Sami is closing in on Rooney really quickly. He's going for an outside move. No, it's going to be inside. He's going to be in a bad position here. This is going to be tricky to pull that up just in time. He's got to give way to let him pull through. But it did actually force Rooney off, so put Rooney slightly off. Oh, there's a car that has spun off. I think that's Gina's car. That's allowed Sami to get ahead. Oh, Rooney's dropped back a couple of positions. He's almost just made contact with Torex on that first corner. That is very close. They are really fighting for it here. It's lap 11. All the action is going on between third position through to seventh. Azero is starting to slowly gain in. Yeah, D-Train, they will need to stay in the same car for the entirety of the series. They can't take advantage of the cars over different tracks. And we have Demon Effects really honing in on the Rooney now. Rooney's dropping back quickly. Not sure if he's got damage that car at all. I don't think so. Well, it might be a bit of a bent bonnet. It's hard to tell with that front grille of the McLaren. Oh, that was so close. Demon Effects almost gets cut off by Rooney. He went for that inside line. So it's cost Demon Effects a little bit of time. Now up ahead is Gallon 350 quietly driving all to himself. I want to see whose car it was that we saw spun out. It was a white car. Maybe in Strasbourg's car. It's falling back a little bit now. So it's a bit of a bent bonnet on that one there. So we may actually have a bit of damage to Rooney's car. That's why he's dropping. Yeah, he's definitely got some front end damage to that car, so he's struggling with that at the moment. That's what's cost him those positions. Santi at the moment is honing in quickly on Demon Effects. So he's really dropped back. He's lost a little bit of pace after he was honing in on the rest of that midfield. Something's going on with Demon's, of Demon's car. So sort of after receding that position to Rooney, sort of lost a bit of pace. That's now allowed Sunny T Bunty to come up quite quickly. Into the chicanes, can you get a nice line through here? ran off just a little bit, so that's put him off a little bit of pace to get past. We've made up for it around that bend. Oh, that is tight. Slipstream around. He's going to need to get ahead pretty quick. He's going to be offline for a nice turn here. Brings that in just in time. Nice pass by Santi. Demon Effects is not giving up just that easily. He's tucked straight back in and looking for an opening already. And Corbs, thanks for joining us. It was a very great pass. Up to lap 14 now. Yeah, it'd be good to catch you next week. I did actually forget you couldn't make it tonight, Corby.
I was wondering why you weren't there first off, and it wasn't until I realised earlier that you couldn't make it. Actually, the guys don't get too far ahead in points on you to um, be able to get a shot at winning this, this hamper that's up for grabs. Zero is still a fair ways back. It's last lap. Gallon has led for this entirety of the race, I think. I did miss the start of the race by trying to get these driver updates sorted. It's a wonderful time to decide to need some device drivers for the stream. Make sure when I test everything earlier on in the day to ensure everything is up to date so I don't have any lag interferences. And it decides to do it just as I start it. And here we are. Flash of the lights for Gallon 350 winning the first race in the opening round. Congratulations Gallon. On track to scoring a wonderful hamper. Zero following up in second position. Followed by Bert, Bertie in the big Bentley. Oh, it's some fancy lighting on that front grille. Some green LEDs. Sasami coming up in fourth position. Trex followed in fifth in the McLaren 650S. And then tightly, Rooney in sixth. Sunty in seventh. Demon Effects followed in eighth. We've been coming up in ninth position. 30 seconds left to get across. There's a normal coming up in the McLaren. His debut race with us. Coming in through on 10th position. He's got a bit of damage to that car as well. Strasbourg also in 11th. So that is some very tight racing indeed. It was unfortunate we didn't get to catch the practice and qualifying sessions. That was very tight times. So with two seconds, only separating the field in qualifying. So for 14 cars, only two seconds apart, that is not much between them. So some beautiful passes we saw towards the end of that. So it'll be very interesting over the course of 30 laps for the main event. So we'll be heading off into a nine minute break and then we'll be back in for session two, which is 15 minutes qualifying. So I'll so I usually talk about what the session details are in the start of the stream, which I did not get to do. We have 15 minute qualifying, weather is medium cloud, and then the main race is 30 laps, weather is light cloud to clear with mandatory pit, and it is a very dangerous position with the pit entry and exit as well. So it will be very interesting to see how things go for that race. So, so also on the podium for the Opening race, 0143 taking second and Bertie taking third. So congratulations, Gallon 350. And I think Gallon also takes the fastest lap. So setting well, there's a 107 towards the back of the field. I know it is his. 107.582. So we very quick race pace indeed. So stay tuned. You'll be seeing some lovely hampers that are available over at Hamper HQ. So that's hamperhq.com.au check out some of the lovely gifts and treats that you can get to send to your loved ones which is especially a good idea if you can't get around and travel because of this COVID stuff with border closures and the like you can always send out a lovely hamper to your loved ones so we'll be back in nine minutes ready for session two
and welcome back for session two. So we'll, we'll cover a bit of the track while we're loading over into the track. So of course we're at the USA for Watkins Glen. So the track length is 4.06 kilometers with eight turns. There's a little bit of a different version compared to the International GP. So it was picked so it's a much shorter and faster track, less trickier spots on the track so that you could try and remove some of the advantages over the cars that they may have as it was sort of trying to make a bit more intense action without any of the cars dominating the field too much. And it seems to be so far after that first session that could be the case that it is quite well mixed. Here we are over into qualifying. And we had Mersey Blue disconnect earlier. So it looks like he hasn't been able to rejoin. Oh no, we've just had as a normal just receiver one grid place penalty already. So speeding in pits. As it is manual pits set for this if you don't have a button set on your rigs or if you're on control it's usually okay but if you have actually got a button set to your steering wheel set up you must actually make sure you hit the, the pit speed limiter otherwise if you get over 60 k's in the pits you will receive that grid place penalty Decision if you are one to usually forget, you can actually disable that on your as actually not having a button set up, it automatically comes on and off as you are in the pits. Dirty in the Bentley, so we've got a bit of time now to familiarize with the other drivers. So, Mersey Blue before was driving the Audi R8 LMS. The Giant 07, we had him debut with us in the final round of the Lake Edge V8 Supercar Championship that finished up Bathurst Mount Panorama last Thursday. So of course this is the opening round of the GT3 World Tour, sponsored by Hamper HQ. You would have saw in the break, all oh, there was just a small selection of the gifts is available from them and actually one of those pictures that was shown there is actually the prize that's up for grabs it is a fantastic prize it's valued at $165 so this is what these drivers are competing for the giant are doing it all in the Nissan GTR and drivers do keep the car selection throughout the rest of the rounds so it's only four rounds for this one. Usually we do a five round series. But we would have actually been ending up on Christmas Eve if we were to do the five. We're gonna have a couple of weeks break over the Christmas period. And then we'll be coming back in with our next series. So first time's coming through the 107s. Not bad for first times being set. In the practice session, they came through with 108s. Where the game time started at 9 o'clock for the first practice session. But currently, game time started at midday, and weather is now medium cloud. So the first session of practice was clear. Weather for qualifying was light cloud. The sprint race was light cloud. So it's now progressed into medium cloud at midday. Should be still quite high track temperatures. It is custom set up so drivers can have the options of choosing what tyre compounds. But he's got the fastest time so far. So we'll make our way down the list. Sasami, so of course, debuting with us tonight. There's a normal coming in with 107s as well. Normal needs to 
making sure he gets quite a strong qualifying position now as he's got that one grid place penalty. Over to Santi in the Ferrari number 31. Also debuting with us tonight. Strasbourg's debut race is tonight as well. And Demon Effects has just come through for the quickest time. In the first qualifying session we saw him perform not too bad. In the practice session he actually took the fastest time right until the very last lap and then Yellen 350 came through for the quickest time. Had D Train managed to join? Now 14 cards on the field again. You see D Train and in what he decided to choose. It looks like BMW. It's BMW Z4, that's the car that's up for grabs. Good to see another car amongst it. Yeah, it looks like a Beamer badge on it. W for sure. Lovely sound coming out of that. So a nice mix of cars on the field now. The McLaren 650S is still the popular choice. And we'll take time to work our way through. The D train was our championship winner for the Bathurst Challenge. He dominated in the V8 supercar over the mountain in a variety of weather conditions. They've done rather well. Where seems to come through with quite a slow opening time. We only saw two seconds difference between that. Oh, we just had Birdie go off track. Yeah, he's just brought that car into the pits. Well, Simo will be able to improve this lap around. Strasbourg. So as you can see there, that white line going off on that bend, it is actually part of the apex, however, that's the pit entry. So there's going to be potentially a lot of disaster as cars start peeling in. And I was actually talking about how the time differences would have been affecting them as we only have two seconds difference between the field. And then with a 15 lap race, lap times of one minute seven, we would be expected with no incidents that the field would only finish 30 seconds apart. So over the course of a 30 lap race, if we get similar times with no incidents, likely that they will only just start catching up for a lap or to lap a car should I say. Geez these McLarens make quite a noise for the headset I'm using to listen and use the mic on. Swapping between that and the Ferrari is a load of difference in audio into my ears. Still holding the quickest time. So I think it was a zero and Yellen taking fastest times just getting into. I'm oh sorry, I think it was Rooney. So there's Gallen with a 107.1. So we saw two cars get in in the first qualifying session with a very slow 106. I think it can definitely be done. I think Gallen could potentially rein that in a little bit more. And with Gallen driving the Ferrari, he's very familiar with that car. He won the championship for the Ferrari 488 Challenge. So he would be knowing that car quite well. 
goes. Virgin needs big Bentley. So far, first eight drivers are less than 0.8 of a second difference between them. Look at that, we have two cars on the exact same time, Azuro and Sami, 107.381. It's not often you get the exact same time, that is white tight. There's Anomal currently in six. Then he does have that grid place penalty. Hopefully we can get Mersey back in. It would be nice to almost have full grids. Yeah, so that line there with how it was going with the reasoning for time difference over the course of a 30 lap race. If they are going to be as tight as they are, especially what we saw in that first race, they are very tight together. Once they start peeling off into the pits, if drivers aren't aware that they're backing off to get into the pits, and you've got to shave off a lot of speed quite quickly. There could be some accidents being caused on that last corner. If you come around that blind corner and someone's slowing that car down to 60, there'll be a big hit. talking to Rooney that we missed out on the broadcast of his nice drift but I did actually save my screen footage on my console so I'll be able to snip at that out at some stage and put up his drift. He did say that he had some rear damage to the car so he'd actually lost control and it just went quite broad so for him to have had the damaged car and do that a nice controlled drift was quite good. So. Be sure to check out our Facebook page link down below. And I'll post up all results of championships and incident reports and any little snippets of spectacular crashes and things from the replays. And if you want to get involved in any of our racing, we also do iRacing. That is on Tuesday nights, it's not broadcast. iRacing that one. We just wrapped up. Cadillac CTS V series and we're starting a Kia Optima one so head over to our Facebook page and there's the link to our group and that has all the details for you how you can get involved into any of our events so you can get out on track and join these guys learn a lot about sim racing have a lot of fun and then there's even great prizes up for grabs Probably not going to be able to always offer a prize, but we'll try to do it as much as we can. And if you join us for the stream and haven't yet hit that follow button, be sure to hit follow so you get notified when we do go live. There's also our YouTube link as well, so all past races get uploaded onto there. So you can go back through and check out all our past broadcasts. So Callum's still holding 107.1. Still holding that pole position. So far, there's only 3.8 se seconds separating the field. The D train in the BMW, so he's a lone wolf out there in the BMW. So he was joining us in the chat for the stream just before. Last message was well done, gals. So he's probably fought might jump in and give him a run for his money potentially. So it seems we're coming in with some nice times in the 109s. It's a nice sounding car in that Benz as well. Ooh, going off track just slightly, not sure if that'll invalidate his time, I don't think so. I think that should be safe. Oh, very broad on the chicanes. That's going to put that into the wall. That's going to end him for this lap. There's only a minute left. He's not going to have an opportunity to improve that time. The Demon FX. Be able to get another lap in. If he improved his time. But he's just had his laps invalidated. Didn't improve it. This will be the lap. Can he steal away pole position from Gallon? 
almost went wide on that bend. That could have potentially invalidated this lap for him. And yeah, Birdie's brought that car in. He must have made quite a big spin off and a big hit. Doesn't like changing to the camera angle there. It's a bit jittery. We've been doing well with a 107.299. Zero and Sami still sitting on the exact same time. I'm not sure how the game actually chooses as to who takes the leading position when that occurs. I'm not sure if it's the first car to have done it. Zero has brought that car in, so it's up to Sami to see if he can improve it. Oh, he didn't improve it. Qualifying is now complete, 80 seconds to go. There's a normal. It does have that grid place penalty. Oh, Simo Simpson nearly goes out in front of him. That might put him off line for these corners. No, that should be enough. Oh, very broad, but he's brought that under control. No, big slide. That's ended it. That's where Maruni did the massive drift, so make sure you stay tuned to our Facebook page so you can see that great drift. Oh, very broad going there again to Rex that same corner it's a real difficult corner that's where I think Simo was just then as well yep so lost opportunities and then we've been practicing figuring out where the pits are so that will be qualifying session complete I don't think Sami well Sami yes he's got a chance to Prove this. Oh, not wall contact, that will have ended it. It says yellow flag out. So, a bit of chaos going on the last. Nice little burnout by Simo. And as uh, he's just sitting there, so just waiting for Simo. So, four seconds remaining for it. And there we have it. So qualifying for session two in round one, we've got Gun 350 taking pole position yet again. Oh, as a normal has now got two grid places, so that now moves him down to ninth position. So now taking that place, we have Terex moving up into seventh position and Santi into eighth. So the rest of the field is Demon Effects, Birdie, Weave and Azuro, Sami, Terex, Santi, as a normal, Jaina, Strasberg, Simo Simsel and Mr. D Train Barbado. So I will just wanted to notice to see if there's a difference in cars. So our first four, there's three Ferraris and one, one Bentley. And then we've got the next three cars are the McLaren. So perhaps there is a little bit of um, similarity to the cars. So there may be a few advantages in different spots that we're seeing there. So over into the race ready room now. So luckily now we will get to actually get to see the race start. I won't be off in the other end of my house swearing at my computer trying to Quickly update graphic driver updates. Sorry, um, versions. It was quite quite an issue to try and do to get it done just in time to see the start of the race. We didn't get too far off. So drivers are doing a couple of minutes now to adjust their car settings. So since there is custom setups. They usually do run lighter fuel loads and probably different tyres for the qualifying. It's likely now, with the season set for the game being summer, hard tyres in hot track temps will actually do quite well. So it's when the colder track temps, the hard compounds just don't grip. So you can actually get a fair bit of grip out of them and make them last. I've mentioned in previous series that a lot of drivers will actually usually swap out just one tyre to a hard compound if they find that just one particular tyre tends to scrub around a track. And then that will make that tyre last out for the race.
race. These mandatory pits for it, so ensuring they have a correct strategy and ensuring they have all the right settings to it as well. As a lot of drivers have to come back for a couple of pits as they don't change their tyres if they have not set it correctly. Here we are, we're getting ready for the green light. And we're green, and it looks like a bit of a slow start for the two at the front. Demon effects gets ahead of Gallon at the moment. If the camera can catch up. Then also Weaven looking to be able to get up dirty at this stage. He just tucks in behind him. Gallant losing a position. I'm not sure if he's being super cautious to ensure he doesn't get a jump start. Gallon has lost. I think a couple of races to jump starts, so possibly playing it quite cautiously. But he's catching back up quite quickly with the demon effects. There wasn't much between these two within times. Can he manage to keep up? Looks like a clean start so far. Well, we've had Strasbourg fall right to the back. Looks like he's taken some damage. I'm not sure if he's spun out, but the rest of the cars seem to be... There's only six seconds separating first to 12. So I think it looks like a good tiny start to the race. Demon effects are only just holding off Garland 350 at this stage. There's less than half a second between the two. And Bertie quickly catching up in that Bentley as well. And he's followed by Weaven in his Ferrari and then followed by about four McLarens. In the first race we saw, oh, there's some cars darting everywhere. Oh, I don't, can't keep up with it. They all move past too quickly. We've got there's a normal quickly catching up on Sami here. Gallon is trying to close in the gap for the lead of the race. Cheers to you, Nickel, for hitting that follow button. If you guys are joining us for the stream, be sure to hit that follow button. Join us in the chat. Let us know who you think is going to win the race here. Will Gallon get a second win for the opening round? He's sitting very tight. Demon effects a little bit slower going around that last corner. And we get Gallon making a pass. He makes a big dart for the inside parts. No, not in time. He has to shave a fair bit of speed off to be able to make that corner. We saw a fair few cars running off wide in the qualifying session. He's going to have to try and pick a different spot. He may need another lap just to gauge where Demon Effects is a little bit slower. He has too many attempts at an attack. It could cost him some time by moving offline and having to break and take the corner a little bit slower. He has lost a bit of ground, so that's now allowed Bertie to catch up quite quickly. Zero is chasing down Weaven very fast. McLaren is catching up very quickly with a nice slipstream advantage. There's a bit of a gap between him and Ez Anomal at the moment. Ez Anomal's been able to recover a couple of positions, so he's moved up into six positions. So he did start back from what I think was over eighth or ninth position. They car lap four throughout the field. There's 21 second difference between them all. Our first nine are only five and a half seconds away from the race leader. This is very tight. Oh, Zero is looking for a move. We even managed to get past Bertie's Bentley. It's almost a tongue twister there. Oh, goes off wide. There's almost some contact. This is coming into the chicane as well. He just tucks in. That's a nice pass, but that's gone way too quick in. So he may be shown a slowdown for that may just wear a time penalty. I don't think shaving off time just yet would be beneficial to him. Taking a one second time penalty over the course of this race may be a better option for him. And we're back down to 13 cars. I'm saying someone may have retired. 
how who it is that we've lost. Gallant 350 is still sitting around that 0.3 to 0.5 second. Oh, the Demon FX has run wide, but Gallant did also. So it's managed to close him in by 0.2 of a second. Will be enough to get past. Interesting to see what strategies these two have got. So 51.4 fuel for Gallant. There's not much difference in fuel there, so not overly an advantage. Oh, big broad slide by Demon FX. Will he... Oh, and we've just had Weave and Dart around. That was a very close call. He managed to get that back on track. I don't think he made a pass. Sometimes you can actually get disadvantaged when an incident occurs like that. If you pass another car at the same time as doing that, it'll actually tell you to relinquish a position. So that's now allowed Gallon to take the lead of the race. And there's now 1.9 seconds between him and second place. So that could give a bit of a safety net to him now. Not sure how far. I think we've lost Rooney. Rooney may have retired us, that's what it looks like it is. Demon effects. So Demon effects has fallen back down to ninth position. It looks like he got out of it without any damage. So he's lucky. So Gina is now sitting behind him, looking to have a crack at him in that Nissan GTR R35. The D trains in the pits if it wants to zoom over and actually look at him. So BMW is going in, so he's probably taken some damage. And Zero is still tracing down Weaven. But he's starting to slip behind a little bit as well. Nice line for a Zero. So that's where we've seen most cars go off wide. So that's D trains just come out of the pits. The pit exit is also quite a dangerous spot. On quite a fast line of track coming through a blind corner. Just as it is to the pit entrance as well. Traffic going in and out of the pits is going to be a big issue as this race goes on. As a normal, after receiving the two group place penalty in qualifying, then having to try and make his way back up, starting from ninth, he's now moved up into fourth position. They're doing quite well. Rex and Demon effects is sitting hot. Demon effects needing to try and reclaim a fair bit of ground. He's tucking in right behind the McLaren. He's giving to Rex. Ooh, nice slingshot. I think it's enough to get around. He's going to force Rex to the brake. No, just got that nice line. So the advantage of the Ferrari being nimble around that corner. He did lose some exit speed out of the corner. Demon effects slowly making his way back up. Demon Effects is quite good at ducking and weaving through traffic. We've seen him do it a fair bit throughout the V8 Supercar series that just finished. So some spectacular passes by him throughout Dubai race. I think that was round two or three. I think there's a good opportunity for him to reclaim a fair bit of ground just yet. It's only eight laps in. go well so far for Gallon. I think it could be a win for him if he can further that lead and then all goes well during a pit stop. He can keep this up for another 21 laps that'll be his. We've just had another car drop. So someone's retired. I think that's Mr. D-Train has just retired. 12 cars out on track at the moment. Zero is struggling to try and catch back up to Weaven. 
So it's Ferraris 1, 2 at the front. I think they're in team colours as well. Birdie's starting to catch up on as a normal. As a normal has recovered very well. Very nice line. Very strong exit speed. Definitely more nimble around that bend than that Bentley. Effects now closing in on Sumty. Uh, unfortunate spin for Demon Effects. We might jump on board for him, make sure I'm not seeing any drastic. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any damage to his car. Over to a zero, so a zero is hot on Weaven's tail at the moment. He's doing a bit of weaving, making himself known in the mirror, putting a bit of pressure onto Weaven. I think we may have a zero potentially be attempting to make a pass in the next lap or so. Very different line. Weaven was well offline coming through that bend. Didn't allow a zero much of an opportunity to get through. It almost looked like Weaven was doing a slowdown. I'm not sure what was going on. And don't forget if you join us for the stream, there are some sound controls down below. You can play all sorts of different sound effects. Cheer on, boo, applaud, bangs and clangs and oh no, that was almost ending for a zero if he had put that into the wall, that car would have then just ricocheted right across the track, this track is not forgiving, you make a mistake here, it puts you into the wall rather quickly, and it's a hard hit as it's a very fast track, and then these Curbs on the track are very steep. We did went on for a lap around the track. As you can see, there's a strong gutter there, as such where that pit lane is. You'll notice around these first couple of corners, I did all this in the practice session, which we didn't get in the stream. So quite a big ditch there, big crest very off camber on these tracks and these curves are rather steep so if you're under like this you can bounce that car up straight into that wall and when it's that steep and then you've just lost a lot of tyre on the ground if you're on the throttle a little bit too much you can put that car in a slide like we saw a few spins in that chicane didn't actually happen much in the first practice and qualifying in the first race. I expected a fair bit to happen there. So There's 30 laps further for the main race. We're on lap 12. There we go. Alan currently leaving, pushing out. Oh, it's a bit of a slide. As, as I was mentioning, getting those tyres up on that kerb. It's very rough on that section of track for the runoff kerb. Bounce these cars around a lot. Almost halfway through now, and Gallon has pushed that lead out to nearly five seconds. I can't remember what that lead was. I think it was six or seven seconds in the sprint race. So he's doing consistent driving by the look of things. And he's got a fair bit of fuel, so he's probably not going to be pitting yet. I'm not sure how much they'll be using over the course of a lap. I assume he's probably going to do a splash of fuel. 
in here what the drivers are talking about for the tyre strategies. So a little bit less discussion with setups and strategies as since there is a good mix of cars, it's not as handy. It's all different. When it's all the one makes, it's quite easy to share a setup and all our drivers do offer up setups on a regular basis. They're always happy to help each other out. That does not always help as it is very personal each time for a setup. So it's really got to complement your driving style. So I'm a couple of seconds behind Bertie now. There's a normal just staying ahead of Bertie. Five seconds behind Azuro. Azuro is still trying to catch up on Weaven. He has dropped back a second after getting right on the tail of Weaven. A minute 30 separating the field at the moment. So Simo seems a little bit behind. I think that was him that had a spin early on. currently on lap 13. They've lost D-Train and Rooney. Nosey Blue did disconnect early on, so we didn't get to see him back for the second session. Zero is closing in that gap again. Interesting to see. There is much of a difference as to where the McLaren may be catching the Ferraris. The drivers will be sticking with this car choice for the remainder of the series. Closing that gap in just enough. Birdie's starting to catch back up on as a normal. Now six seconds behind a zero. Oh, Bertie almost goes off wide. That's costing a little bit of time. a second difference he was bringing that lead down to almost half a second behind there's it but that's now slipped down after running wide so it's allowed Sami now to catch up and Demon Effects is moving his way back up still he's now currently in seventh position and he's quickly catching up on Sami and Bertie Probably come down to pitch strategy here. You can do a nice quick change. The drivers do not have to have anything done. They can just do a stop and go. You can set up a pitch strategy so that you do no change, no repairs, no fuel. It'll just be basically at four, four seconds stopped. So you jack the car and then drop it and you're good to go. That counts as your mandatory pit. If you can get your car set up and manage to perform it in a way that you can actually make a set of tyres last and the weight and everything is fine for fuel, and you can just do a very quick pit stop and use that to your advantage. So, still not being able to close that gap in on weaving just yet. Weaven has actually closed in on Gallant quite quickly. I'm not sure. So Weaven's last lap a little bit quicker. Gallant seems to have the quickest lap out of all of them. Yes, you can just see last lap set 109.840 for Gallant and 108.743 for Weaven. 
the gallon is starting to slow pace a little bit at the front. And that can tend to happen once you've been at the front for a while. And we're out 18 laps in, so fatigue would probably be kicking in just a little bit. And that sounds like a car just ahead of gallon. That is. Yes, that sounds like the skyline. Yes, so there's Gallon in the back there. He's now catching up to Joanna. This could be an opportunity for Weaven and Azuro to now try and catch up to our race leader. Gallon will need to try and find a spot to get around. Or another strategy could be that he decides to pit now. More than halfway through the race. I think we're using about three litres of fuel to a lap. I'll try and pay attention to here. 27. But he possibly has enough fuel. So it'll just depend on what his options are for tyres. Heading down, not getting caught up behind any uh, slow traffic. Might gauge it more once he gets a little bit closer, just see if there's a good, safe, clean and fast opportunity to get past. If not, it's sometimes best just get that car in the pits, get your mandatory served. Allow that traffic to then get back up ahead, it'll potentially slow down those behind you. And then you get back out on track pull our power through as the rest will still need to pit. The zero is still trying to close that gap in on Weaven. Army's just been passed by Demon FX, so he's now moved up into sixth position. So he's done well, so we saw him drop down to I think it was either 11th or 9th position after that spin, allowing Gallon to take the lead of the race. So he's recovered nicely. He's lucky he didn't take any damage in that spin out. We'll keep an eye on Gallon, see if he's going to get around. Giant is not really allowing him to catch up too quickly. Giant has got some good pace still. That's going to make things difficult for him to try and get past. He will be shown a blue flag to move out of the way, but he needs to be able to do that in a very safe spot. So the drivers are communicating in the party as to where they're going to do it. It's going to be a difficult spot here. John has got some very good pace at the moment. and get around. He may choose to pit in this next lap. There's nine laps left, so I'm assuming drivers have probably opted for the hard tyres. Not fitting yet, so Demon FX has decided to pit. We'll see him drop a couple of positions, but he'll recover that very quickly while everyone else is making their men for pits. Closing quickly now, Gallon will be pretty eager to try and get past now. Weavens looks like he has a... Oh, Giant has gone well off. He's gone well off track to allow these guys through. That was very gentlemanlike of him. Well done, Giant. Allowed the whole pack through. Oh, and the Zero gotten past Weaven, but only just, oh, they're gone both off wide, looking to pass again off track, potentially. It did look like that Weaven's car may have had a little bit of damage. It looked like when he had some headlights on, I'm not sure if it was a reflection, but it was only one light working. Yeah. 
may have made contact somewhere. We may be a little bit off pace. So they zero managed to get past as they were making way to get around Gina as he moved off track for them. Oh, I think it's his light reflection actually, we just saw it then. Or is it his headlight? I'm not sure. reflection so it doesn't look like any damage to Weaven's car. There's sunlight reflecting on that corner of the bonnet. Gallon's pushing this car out still. A zero M Weaven still need also to pit also. Ezra and Bertie are in the same thing so only Demon Effects has pitted. There's seven laps remaining. It's going to be a mad rush for the pits. They need to be very cautious. got past and then started to put a fair bit of distance over him. It's very easy to spot that racing number with the huge number in the front grille of that car. Any catch up? Really interesting to see that none of our race leaders are pitting. There's only three seconds between first and third. 12 seconds separating to then the fourth position. These two guys are contesting now for fourth position. I'm probably waiting just to see who pits first. That's definitely going to come down to pit strategy here. That's Santi's Ferrari up ahead, so there's more traffic coming up. With only five more laps, I think it's probably best to just to pit in instead of trying to get past some traffic. I think we'll probably see Gallon heading to the pits now. Yeah, so I think he's got enough fuel to get through. Is he going to peel off into the pits? No, he's not. going on there. He's using the slipstream there still. Santi moves out of the way for the blue flag. That was a pretty good spot for Gallon to get around. Oh, big broad slider. Zero has made wall contact. That's cost him. It's going to cost him lots of positions. No, he's only lost the one position, but Ezra will be catching up quite quickly. I think some weird times coming up it said that Azura was a minute off. And then it was that good safety net, so he's only lost the position back to Weaven, so that he's very lucky for a zero. Lap 25, five laps remain. Most cars haven't hit. When are they going to head in? Weaven's got some catching up to get back to Gallon. Five seconds now separating. Gallon doing rather well. Oh, Simo Simsel just moved out of the way, but that was some severe bouncing going on. Zero now heading into the pits. Let's see what he's getting done. He's only got 9.6 litres of fuel. I don't know if that's enough. That's a very quick stop, so didn't get any fuel. It's just a very quick stop and go, so these tyres are lasting. Right at the moment, Gallon and Weaven need to get in, so does Ezra Normal. Sami also needs to pit and Terex. Is 
Zero now 35 seconds behind. Let's see what is best. That's about 22 seconds for a pit stop. The position should relatively stay the same. The drivers need to be cautious as I'm pretty sure Weaven Go Fox. Gowan and Weaven are team colours. So there could be the potential for a pit delay if they pit in at the same time. That could potentially be a strategy being used by Gallant if he pits as late as possible and pits first. That could slow up Weaven significantly as he could potentially have to wait for him to finish using the stall before he gets in. He hasn't pit. Oh, he's going on the brakes. Get some time. What is Weaven? Weaven's got to have to go around. Have to pit next lap. Plenty of fuel. Let's see if no one gets a splash of fuel. No. It's Weaven triple seven now. The race leader, as a normal, needs to pit as well. Weaven becomes the race leader as anomaly in second, Sami in third, but we do need pit stops out of these three. Trax is making his mandatory pit. There goes the McLaren. Weaven is going to have to pit this lap, I'm pretty sure. I think it's going to be a dash for Weaven, Ezra and Sami for this lap. They would be getting the game. Chief Engineer, here he goes, in for his pit. Fontaine just goes past, and Simo Simsel as well. As a normal, is he going to choose to pit this lap? Looks like he's in line for it. Yep, here he goes. So it's a race to the pits in the last couple of laps of the race. Sami following as well. So uh, that allowed Gallon 350 to reclaim the lead. Lap 29 of 30. I think Gallon will have this race won in his. There shouldn't be any issues going on now. Weird timings coming up as Weaven exits the pits. So he's now eight seconds behind. Now, so he's going to be a double win. And he did get the fastest lap in the first one as well and took pole. Can he have a clean sweep throughout the entirety of the round? Zero is in third. Hasn't lost much more position. Bertie is in fourth position. It's not too far behind. I'm not sure if we've seen him pit. As it was ahead and Sami. And they pit. I think Bertie's got ahead in now. Maybe he's already pit. Maybe he pit quite early on. I may have not noticed Bertie pitting. Something going on with Gallon there. So that was redlining out, and then a few taps of the brakes. Not sure what's going on. He's not having some technical issues. If he's just taking it easy for the last lap. He's probably watching the stream. <laughs> Saying this is his race. Oh, he comes weaving though. 
He does not want to make a mistake here and have William and oh, sorry, Weaven pass him just in the last bit. Slowing right down. Oh, is he going to give the position up? Oh, he's, he's just toying. Look at that. Some good banter between him and Weaven. And here comes a zero in third position. Congratulations to Gallon in first, Weaven in second, Zero in third, Bertie in fourth. There's a big recovery after starting quite back in the field into fifth position. Sami into sixth. Followed by Terex coming up in the seventh position. Demon FX did get a good recovery in the end, but he's taking some more damage, so that's put him back to eighth position. Sunti's now coming up onto straight to finish in ninth position. Jaina also the same. Completing in 10th position. Well done. Strasbourg coming up. 10 seconds to get last laps done. Strasbourg and Simo Sims will cross the line. I don't think we'll get time to see them. And there we are. Round one of the Hamper HQ GT3 World Tour. So Gallon 350 takes another win. Also on the podium is Weaven Triple Seven and a zero one forty three. And we'll have a look and see who took the fastest lap. And I think it is a clean sweep for the entirety of the opening round, going to Gallon 350. So he's taken the fastest lap here as well. So we saw him take pole position in the first session. In the second session, two wins and two fastest laps. So big points for the opening round. So then there is that great hamper being sponsored by Hamper HQ. So they'll be sending out a wonderful big prize to the winner of this championship. So that's what they are contesting for. So I did. I think I mentioned in the start of the before I started actually getting the broadcast to work. Weaven 777 won't be making it for the next few rounds. So we wish you all the best while you can't make those next few rounds and hope to see you on track again. So we might try and get him in even maybe on a stream for a chat. But um, well done to all drivers. A great opening round. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit that follow button. Then we also have three more rounds. So the next session... I can bring it back up on my screen. So we have Azure, so it will be very interesting there. Lots of walls. It is going to be a very interesting race. I think Ferraris will probably have quite a good crack at the, the circuit there. It will be a very tight racing indeed, especially for the strength of the field that we saw for this round. So don't miss out on that. And then you can Follow on our Facebook page, see all the race results and standings, so you can see any incident reports. And if you want to get involved in any of our racing, be sure to head over to our group. We'd welcome to have you there. So thanks for tuning in, and hopefully we see you for round two at Azure Circuit next week on Thursday, 7.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Thank you.